Hello everyone, and welcome to Deserted. This is the story of Dune Lord, an ultimate Iron Man restricted to the Caridian Desert and looking to take advantage of everything that has to offer. With the announcement of the Tombs of Amasket, I realized that this account was destined for something, to be able to defeat the enemies that lie within this new raid, all without trading, banking, or leaving the desert. Let's get into it. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Do you ever wonder why I'm always wearing a helmet? I mean, yeah, stats, defensive bonuses, whatever, but the real reason is because like two out of three men, I am experiencing hair loss. Luckily, the sponsor of today's video is none other than Keeps, and they got me covered. Keeps is an online subscription service that helps men keep their hair. They offer personalized, clinically proven treatments to fight the symptoms of hair loss, promote hair growth, or just take better care of the hair you have. And for a much more affordable price, and most customers see results in the first six months of treatment. Another really cool thing about Keeps is that the products are shipped right to your door, so you get doctor-approved treatments without ever having to step foot in a doctor's office. There's also 24-7 customer care and support with a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals a reality. And remember, the best time to stop the effects of hair loss is before it gets really bad, so if you're noticing signs of your hair starting to go, this may be for you. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash extrakeen or click the link in the description. That's k-e-e-p-s dot com slash extrakeen and thanks to Keeps for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back everybody. We are so close to being able to enter the Tombs of a Masket and uh, I'm happy to say that we will be doing that in the next video. So this episode is just going to be dedicated to getting every single thing that we need prepared for it so that by the time the next episode starts, we can just get right into the raid, start raiding, getting some loot, getting some purples. You know how it is. Um, the main thing that we're going to be doing in this episode is killing Locust Riders, and that is for Adamant Ore so that we can make all of these Ruby Bolt tips into Adamant Bolts because that is going to be crucial for the Tombs of a Masket to have these bolts. So we're pretty much going to be camping them for a while until we have all of the ores necessary and uh, whatever else we're going to need. We'll figure it out as we go, but that's definitely the first thing we'll be getting into. I want to start killing them as fast as possible so that we can get into the raid as fast as possible. Um, so we're definitely going to be putting the pet away because this is dangerous. This is a dangerous activity and I am not going to be losing the pet. Also, shout out to James and shout out to our brand new pet, Tiny Tempor. I know that we haven't really had a chance to have him following me around on any grinds yet, but you know, he's still cool. He's still here. He looks so sad. He's in the corner. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll have him with us on a grind, but for now, I'm not gonna risk losing it. So let's get into the next thing. So there's one item that I've been holding on to for quite a long time that I'm actually going to drop because there's really no point for me to keep it. And that is the Marantil Tar stack. I got these stacked up like back when I did the last Locust Rider grind. And these are important for killing the Calphite Queen. But since we have the Dragon Chain Body and the pet, I really don't think there's a point to going back if I'm being honest. I could get the Dragon Two-Hand Sword, which actually would probably have a purpose in Tombs of a Mass Skip, but not really worth grinding Calfi Queen to try and get it, you know, so. And they're also adding the Dragon Pickaxe, or they're talking about adding the Dragon Pickaxe to the Calfi Queen drop table, which would be really cool to get, but I don't think I need it because my mining level is already like as high as it needs to be on the account. I could use the Dragon Pickaxe for Tombs of a Mass Skip, and you could even store it in the Tombs of a Mass Skip, but Again, I would rather just like do the mining part with a mithril pickaxe or something than spend the time it would take to grind out a dragon pickaxe from Calphite Queen. So yeah, I think we're done with Calphite Queen forever. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop these. It hurts, but that it just is what it is, you know, ultimate Iron Man life. I'm also here because I need to get a partisan for this Locust Rider grind. The last time I did the Locust Riders, the Partisan wasn't out yet. So I did the whole thing with the Karis, like the regular Dagger Karis. And then as soon as I was done with the grind, they released the Partisan like, you know, a couple days after, which, yeah, that's just my luck. But this is going to be way better and we're going to be killing way more Locusts per hour than we used to. So I'm going to get my inventory set up and I will meet you guys in Sofanim. I'm not sure if this is going to really apply to anybody because I don't know how many people actually kill scabarites down here, but you can talk to the Sophonim guards to buy a torch and a tinderbox, which you need a light source for when you're down there. So yeah, this helps a little bit with that. There we go. I'm pretty sure that's everything I need. If I need something else, then I will figure it out later. But uh, let me just try and remember the system I used to do for this. I know it involves like uh, prayer flicking and whatever, but yeah, I'm just gonna get down there, I suppose. 
I came down here and realized that my tile markers were gone, so I had to go back into my old videos and remember where they are. Uh, these tiles right here, these three are safe to hide on because he can't move farther than this line here. And if you click on these tiles, then you're gonna get sent down to the lower level where you're pretty much gonna die if you don't teleport out really quick. It says don't click here rather than don't stand here because you can like path through these. Like if you click here, then it'll path you around it. But if you actually click on them and your character will move to that tile and then you'll get sent down in the trap door. So don't click here. Uh, this is the safe spot. And then we pretty much just pray range. I think they attack every six ticks. I will figure that out, but yeah. These Locust Riders are equally weak to stab and crush. And since our stab bonus is just one higher than crush, it's a very small difference, but you know what? That means we're gonna be stabbing these guys. So yeah, let's just try this out, I guess. And the first kill, we get an Adamant Kite Shield. We're also gonna be getting quite a bit of things to high out through this grind too. So the money stack might hit like 25, 26 mil, I don't know, but there is some money. Here's one drop that we're gonna need from this grind. We're gonna get a stack of coal and adamant ores saved up from these guys. After a couple kills of doing this, the muscle memory is like totally coming back to me. I got the metronome going in the background. You can't hear it, but yeah, it's <laughs> it's probably because I spent like, you know, 200 plus hours doing this, but yeah, the muscle memory is kicking in. Oh, we got lava runes. These are very nice because I can replace my stack of fire runes with lava runes now. I know we dropped a bunch of them in like the last video, the Temporos video, but these are gonna be a little bit more useful than fire runes because now if we need to, we can equip the Tome of Water and we have bones to peaches because the lava runes are also earth runes. So if we ever need food, we could just make peaches out of their bones. The first mithril bar drop. <laughs> Man, these give me just like so much dopamine because this was what we were killing Locust Riders for last time because we needed to get 73 smithing. So every time I see Mithril Bar, parentheses 22, I don't know, I just get a little bit excited, you know? Uh, we're gonna be saving these two because I guess we could probably just make like darts or arrows or something out of them. Like we're, we'll have some use for these. So I'm just gonna save them up and we'll see, we'll see. We just got our first adamant arrow drop and this one is gonna be super useful for us because these guys drop adamant and rune arrows. And I am definitely gonna be bringing a magic short bow into Tombs of Amaska with me. I'm not sure if I'll be using the adamant or the rune or I'll probably be using both of them over time. But for now, we're gonna put these in our ammo slot, which we cleared up from the Marin Tiltars. And we're gonna start stacking arrows as well. Just a whole nother reason why we're doing this grind right now. And speaking of rune arrows, we got our rune arrow drop like one or two kills later. So now we got a whole nother stack we're just gonna leave down here. There we go, it took me long enough. 160 kills to get my first adamant ore drop. It's a one in uh, 64 by the way, so I went almost three times the drop rate to get my first one, but you get 14 adamant ores every single drop, so that's 140 bolts for every single drop. Um, pretty much we need to get enough to where we can make all of these into bolts. So yeah, at the moment it looks like we need about 290 adamant ores, but you know, I'm also getting rubies throughout this and turning them into bolt tips as I go. So, you know, whenever the number is right, that is when we will stop. So yeah, that's the first of many. So one of the benefits of doing this grind now, um, like as opposed to the last time I did it, since Beneath Cursed Sands is done, this altar right here is now repaired. So I can charge my prayer here every time it runs out instead of having to run all the way over to this one. Just saves a little bit of time and run energy and stuff and I can just get back into the cave a lot faster because my trip length is completely dependent on my prayer because I like lazy flick everything. Yeah, we're already right back down to where we were. Well, as per usual, the Dune Spoon, uh, it continues. The Dune Spoon continues. We got a Dragon Spear at 561 KC. This is a one in 5,000 drop approximately, by the way, in case you are wondering. So uh, yeah, <laughs> we already have one and it's Poison++ plus plus from Cal Fight Queen. So this one is a Alk or is an Alk. Grammar is important, kids. Um, but yeah, that's really cool to see that rare drop table. I would like to see the Dragon Med Helm. I mean, I'm gonna get a Dragon Med Helm in Tombs of a Masket because it's just on the regular drop table, but how cool would that be to get it from here instead, you know? That's an Alk, but a very cool drop. I should also probably mention that that is number six in the collection log, which is kind of cool for it being such a rare drop.
there it is. The very last adamant ore drop that we need. We are done with locust riders. It took us 1,258 locust rider kills to get all the adamant ores we needed, as well as all these other supplies that we got stacked up, which is pretty handy. I'll just put up a screenshot of all of the loot that I got over the course of these kills. And uh, yeah, we're moving on to what's next, which is going to be smithing our bolts, going through all this stuff. We've been stacking up this raw food to cook through it just because we're so close to 99 cooking. Uh, yeah, we got some stuff to do, so let's get started on it. I should also say that now that I'm done with Locust Riders, um, I think that's the last thing I need where I need the Ring of Wealth for. <laughs> like, I made the Ring of Wealth so that I can have a better chance of getting the rare drop table to get the Dragon Spear, which I have done, and it also automatically picks up coins for you. And now that I'm done with really killing things that drop items in general, I think I'm done with this. I think I'm gonna alk it and just like use the Ring of Dueling because the teleport to the Duel Arena is gonna be so massive. And also they just added this thing to the game where you can swap your shift click. So I can make it PVP arena and now I don't have to risk teleporting to the wrong place. I just shift click and it takes me there. So we are going to alk this ring of wealth. You were very good to us, but there you go. And one last thought that I had is in the last episode, every time I did the death storage, I kept my rune crossbow on me because it has the ornament kit. I think what I can do is dismantle the ornament kit from it and it just takes the kit off. And I think that now if I die, it should appear in the chest, which means I don't have to have this inventory space on me. So yeah, I'm gonna make sure we're all set up and then I'll see you, you know, in the death room. Come on, just kill me already. There we go. And it looks like we did not keep the rune crossbow, which is good. I'm gonna take the ring of dueling and the ferro scepter for teleports. So I'm just gonna start out by cutting through all these sapphires, just cause the bank camel's right here. I think I can unnote stuff. Yeah, there we go. Just gonna chop and drop these. There is all the sapphires cut. And with that out of the way, I think the next thing I'm gonna do is cook through all the raw fish. This one, I mean, you see me do it a million times in the last episode as well. So uh, this isn't even gonna get us to 99. It's gonna get us like half of this remaining XP. So I'm just gonna kind of cut to the end. That's all the bass cooked right there. And that is the last of the lobsters. So the very end of all the fish that we got stacked up. 136,000 cooking XP until 99, which I already did the math and that's around 650 sharks. So that's how long it's gonna take into cooking food for Tombs of a Masket for us to get the 99. And we're back at the pyramid to grab some stuff. I think it's time to work on smithing now. Uh, we're gonna do the bolts first, just because inventory management, you don't need to know why. We're gonna grab the ore and the coal and our nature runes and fire runes because we're gonna need to high elk them or not high elk, superheat them. And I'll come back later for the bolt tips because I don't know what kind of inventory space we're gonna end up needing for this. I went over to Ali Morrisane to buy more nature runes because we're gonna need the same amount of nature runes as we have adamant ores for the superheating. And I realized that uh, nature runes cost coins and I didn't withdraw those. So I guess we're gonna grab that too. Essentially, the way the system for smithing works is that an adamant ore requires six coals to be turned into a bar. So we save six inventory spaces for coals and the rest of our inventory is filled with adamant ore. We superheat a bar, unnote six coals, superheat a bar, unnote six coal until the inventory is full of bars. Then we run over to the anvil to turn them all into bolts. There's 74 smithing. Does this get us anything cool? Oh, adamant darts. That actually might come in handy someday, but but I feel like all the adamant bars we get are probably gonna get turned into bolts instead of darts, so probably not that useful, actually. There's 3,000 bolts, and there is 3,010, which is all of the bolts that we're gonna need because we only have 3,008 of the ruby bolt tips. So I think with the rest of these bars, I'm just gonna turn them into... Can I make arrow tips? I can't make arrow tips, no. I guess I'll just make them into bolts too. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the extra ones. Maybe I'll just end up dropping them, but we'll see. But that is all of the adamant bars turned into bolt tips. Once again, back at the pyramid, and this time I'm gonna grab the mithril bars, the ruby bolt tips, and then these stacks of runes right here because I do need to enchant these after I you know, turn them into the ruby bolts. So yeah, that should be everything for now. And in case you're wondering what I'm doing with these mithril bars is I'm gonna turn these into bolts as well. It's gonna be nice having like a stack of just like bolts I can shoot through a little bit more carelessly and not have to worry about like getting my health drained by the ruby bolt special effect. Having all of these extra mithril bolts is gonna, you know, let me stretch these ruby bolts a lot thinner, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense, but we're bringing two stacks of bolts into Tombs of a Mask. That's all I gotta say about that. 
And last one, we are all done with the mithril bolts and the adamant bolts. And <laughs> I just realized, I'm pretty sure like after we make these into bolts, this is like the last skilling ever on the account, <laughs> except for like, you know, if I run out of supplies, I might have to do some more like cooking the sharks, I guess counts, but we are like so in the home stretch of this account that like, I think I'm done like gaining like skilling levels. I'm done with, I don't know, it's, it's surreal. It's surreal to believe that we're almost there. I'm just gonna head over to the pyramid, grab all my stuff out, and then we're gonna move on to the very last step of this video and the very last thing before Tombs of a Masket. The very last grind we need to do before we can enter the Tombs of a Masket is to catch some implings. The main items we're looking for is a bowstring from Young Implings so we can make a magic short bow, a mithril pickaxe from Eclectic Implings since it's the best pickaxe we have access to and we need one for the raid, and prayer potions which are either dropped from Ninja Implings or the snape grasses which are dropped from Eclectics since we have a stack of Renars that we're going to drop after this Impling hunting grind. So let's get started. So while we're scouting for Implings, I am going to be doing all my fletching. So I'm going to trade Shanty and we're going to buy all the feathers we need, which is like over 7,000 of them. And that is all the feathers. So it looks like we're just going to be clicking like this while we're scouting for Implings. And hopefully we can get everything on our list. Look at this tease over here on the other side of the fence. I know he's got prayer potions in his pocket. I just know it. We just caught a young impling and got the bowstring. This is the first young impling that I caught, by the way, so pretty freaking convenient. Um, now all we need is either a steel ax from a young impling so we can chop down a magic tree or uh, just getting a magic log from a nature impling, whichever one comes first. That's gonna be our magic short bow right there. I just finished enchanting all of the bolts, so we're done. We're done with the, uh, with the fletching part of this grind, which to be honest is the last thing I really need to do. I am going to continue to world hop for implings just like for a couple more days just because I'm super caught up with the videos right now. Like as of right now, the Temporos video hasn't even come out yet. And that was like two videos ago. So <laughs> I'm just going to kind of hang out here, catch as many implings as I can and try and stack as many prayer potions as I can. The goal is to like um, not need prayer potions for my Tombs of a Masket runs, but it's going to be nice to have them at least in the beginning while I'm learning. So we'll see how many snape grasses I can get. We're gonna get the magic short bow, maybe catch some dragon, lucky implings, whatever else. Hey, there's the mithril pickaxe, which is gonna be the pickaxe that we store in Tombs of a Masket to do the Akka puzzle. If you don't know what the Akka puzzle is, then just wait until the next episode. All you gotta know is it requires a pickaxe and this is the best one that we can achieve in the desert besides lucky implings. I mean, maybe I'll get a rune pickaxe or an adamant one from a lucky, but um, for now, this is gonna be the one that we save for raids. And there it is. We just got the magic log drop from a nature impling. So we can go ahead and cut that into a magic short bow and then string it up. And that's it. That's the last piece of gear we need for Tombs of a Masket. Like I said, I'm still going to be world hopping implings for a while. I'm going to do that in between episodes. So this is probably where I'm going to call it for this episode. And then, uh, yeah, starting in the next episode, we will be entering the Tombs of a Masket. It's finally time. When I created this account over a year and a half ago, I had no idea that there would be a raid added to this region of the game. But after all we've been through, all the grinding, all the RNG, and all the memories we made from the journey that it took to get us here, it's time to take this account to its final challenge. In the next episode, we will be defeating the enemies that lie within RuneScape's newest raid, the Tombs of a Masket. Thank you all so much for being a part of this, and I'll see you guys next time in part one of the deserted finale.